Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil. We're going to start out again with our our pencil here, and I'm going to show you some proportioning. As we do, people, um, if you understand the proportions of people, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to draw. So we, we compare everything to the size of the head. So start out with the size of your head, and it doesn't have to be ex excessively large, but um, I'm just gonna start out with kind of an egg shape, kind of an oval like that. And even though that's not perfectly his head shape, it's a good starting point. And if you look at, at the proportions here, his eyes are right in the middle of his head. So you could go in there and you could just put a little line like right in the middle and just say this is this is the center this is where his eyes are going to go and if you di dissect that from the center to the chin and you put another line in there come right up above that so if if this is the center between here and there and there and there this is not his nose this is this is actually where his mustache is so his nose is slightly above and his lips are slightly below but his mustache, and you can throw his mustache in there if you want to. Make him look like Mario. Or Guido or somebody. And then and then you'd have his lip. And right below his lip is this little dark area. Um, he's got a little bit of fur coming off of there. Or hair, however you want to call it. But that's some basic proportioning. And then, of course, you've, you've got a neck that comes off, not quite off this, the side of the head, but as it comes down and curves where the jaw is, you can, there's a neck. And the neck slightly goes towards the middle. So there's the neck. And then your shoulders come out from there. And you have one head width in between the center. So you could, you could come down, you can look at your your head and go, okay, I've got to have that much width over there. If this is my center. Some people will actually draw a line down there and say, you know, this is the spine or the center. And then they'll say, okay, I've got one head width over here. There's a shoulder. One head width over here. There's a shoulder. So you can, you can kind of figure out where your shoulders go. Of course, his vest makes his shoulder stick out a little bit. And if you're doing superhero designs, which y'all should probably do that just because it's a lot of fun, you want to broaden those just a little bit, make them a little more heroic. Then, if you think to his arm, his arm is almost two heads in length. So you can kind of measure his head and go, okay, from here to there, shoulder to shoulder, there's one head length. And then leave a little bit for the elbow, and then another head length. To his wrist and that helps you to get the length of the arm and again this is a principle of art called proportioning then the hand is a little bit longer than from his chin to his eyebrow so i can measure that and just come down here and go okay that's his hand from there to there there's his hand and i'm not drawing in fingers or anything you could i like to mitten them you know, put your fingers together and, and put a little little sausage for a thumb and there's there's the hand. Because all we're doing is blocking it in at this point. All this other stuff that's in there, I mean, if his, if his baldric, that's this belt that goes along his, his chest, if it's in the wrong spot, nobody cares. You know, it slides up and down. But you gotta get the eyes, the nose, and the mouth in the right place, the hand in the right place. Everything else you can fudge at. So like his belt and everything, look at his hand, look where his wrist is, and then you just come above that and you go, okay, that's the bottom of the belts over here. The top's gonna be up here. He's got a couple of pistols. So I'm just gonna throw those in real quick. I'm not trying to get detail, not even trying to get size really, I'm just throwing them in. Remember that on his head, there's hair and that broadens it out a little bit. So you can, you can make him have his little bandana, just curve that just above his eyebrow, and then his hair.
And these are guidelines. Now, if you're really, uh, it's really hard to get a likeness. So don't even expect a likeness. Um, it might look similar to Jack, but I wouldn't expect a likeness. That, that's probably one of the hardest forms of art, it's portraiture. But you do want to get as close as you can. So I'm just now adjusting anything that I look at it and I think, okay, I'm just going to adjust the chin a little bit. His chin is a little broader than the initial drawing I had. But remember, there's a ton of stuff that we're going to leave out. So when you start thinking humans, you think, oh, I got to do all those details. You don't. In fact, with humans, especially the face and the hands, there's a ton that you leave out. Remember, we're only going to draw the shadows. and We're going to allow the viewer to fill in the gaps. Whatever we leave out, they're going to fill it in with their imagination. And that's the fun part. So I haven't drawn eyes or anything in. Um, I'm going to zoom into his face and then we'll block in the eyes. There is a, again, proportioning that you do with the face and using the eye as our, as our example. So I'm going to zoom into his face and then I'm going to zoom into mine. I'm going to show you some proportioning techniques. So what you do is you first start out with one eye and it doesn't matter which eye you start out with. Um, I'm just going to start out with this one here and I'm just going to look at the side of his head. If this is the side of his head, I'm going to come in three quarters of an eye. So not quite one whole eye length. Come in three quarters of an eye, make a little mark there and a little, little arch. There's the top of the eye and you're, we're looking up into his head a little bit. And so, um, you're not going to see all of that arch that's there. And if you wanted to, you could put in a little bracket there and a little bracket there for your, your iris, but you don't have to put it in. And since we're looking up, the bottom of his eye is almost level. It's curves ever so slightly. So it's almost straight across, but it, it just has a slight curve because we're looking up into it. Now compare the size of that eye and then put one eye in between. So you have one eye length in between your eyes. And so you just compare that size, the length of the eye, the eye itself, not, not the eyelid, the eye itself. And then make that other one over there, make a little mark. There's one eye in between the eyes and then do the exact same thing for the other eye. And leave about three quarters of that length on the edge over here. This one actually is a little bit more because his head is tilted a little bit. And you've got a little hair that's coming out of the, the hat over there. and a little bracket for his iris because the top and bottom part of that circle is covered up by the, his eyelids. So all I'm doing is blocking it in though. I realize that a lot of this stuff I'm just going to do with ink. And so look at the shadows, like this little shadow that's right here, this little shadow that's right there. We're going to do those little shadows in. But everything else we're going to leave out. All this stuff in here we're going to leave out. We'll just do some little hatch marks over there. The bridge of his nose we're going to leave out completely. Maybe a couple little hatch marks here and there. But for the most part, leave the bridge out. And then the underneath part where this heavy shadow is right there, we'll throw some hash marks in there. But for the most part, you leave it out. So I'm just going to do the nose real quick. 
comes straight down from the tear duct and that's the corner of his nose. Each tear duct, if you come straight down from the tear duct, that's the corner of the nose. Your nose is exactly one eye length wide. I know that kind of sounds weird, but that's, that's proportioning. And it works every time. The nostril, don't do a hole for the nostril, just do the top edge. So it's kind of like a little, uh, just a little upside down U or a little Nike swoosh. Upside down Nike swoosh. Don't do the bottom part because the bottom part has a little bit of light on it. Even though it's hard to see, you just kind of know it's there. And again, if you wanted to, we're gonna, we're just gonna do a couple little dots or dashes right there to show the, the tip of his nose. And that's it, that's all you do. Then, of course, he's got his little mustache. We can put that in later. And his lips. We don't want to draw a line around his lips, but we do want to define them. So I'm going to define them with my pencil and just realize we're not going to draw a line around his lips. Remember, you don't draw a line around anything. You just kind of dots and dashes and allow the viewer to... If you go to the center of the eye, just inside the iris, and you come straight down from there, that's where the corner of the mouth is. Same thing on the other side. Center of the eye, just on the inside, come straight down from there, and that's where the corner of the mouth is. And you can make a little mark, and then there's his lips. And that's your proportioning. And everybody's about that way. If you learn proportions, drawing humans is so much easier. And there again, there's all that hair in there, and we'll just do that with line. If you wanted to, you could you could block it in very, very softly. But remember, all this gets erased. And if I'm doing a portrait, I, I do. I, I take my pencil and I kind of block it in because I want it as close as I can get. Everything else is okay. If the hair is out of place, you know, even if these beads coming off his head are in a different place, nobody cares. But you put the eye someplace else and, and everybody knows it. And even, you know, shoulders and everything else, they can be slightly off. But eyes, nose, and mouth, those are important. And since this is our emphasis area, this is the area that's most important, that's the one we're going to start with. And if you can nail the face, if you can get it just right, everything else will fall into place. I promise you. So I personally like to start with the face because if the face isn't going to work out, I don't want to keep drawing anything else. So let's see if we can nail the face, if we can get that just right. There are faster ways to draw, but I'm not sure that they're as efficient without the skill. So this is, this is a good way to do it. Once we add the mustache and everything, hopefully this will look pretty much like Jack. So you ready for ink? So the first thing I'm gonna do is the eyes. And let me just show you. So it's the standard eye. You start out with the top eyelid, and I'm just gonna do little hatch marks along there. Dots and dashes, whatever it takes. Little hatch lines there. And then you, you do just a, a little dot or dash for the, the corner of his iris. There's one over there, one over here. Then he's got a shine in the middle. So we're going to leave that shine out and just put in the pupil as this little kind of dot. Kind of like a little bowl shape, if you will. Just a little one. And the rest of it, you can use dots and dashes. So I'm just gonna put little dots and dashes in there just to darken it up. He's got very dark eyes. But I wanna leave that shine out. 
we can always come back into this later. So after after we've drawn a little bit, if we think, oh, those eyes are not dark enough. But it's best to do less than more. Okay, just like our wolf. Just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. So the corner of his eye is kind of dark too. I'm just going to put some little dots and dashes there. And there's a little triangle right there in the corner of his eye. I'm going to leave that in there. And then I'm going to allow the corner of his eye or the edge of his eyelid to just take care of itself. And then I'll put in this little triangle of darkness over here where his tear duct is with some dots and dashes. And then instead of drawing a line under his eye where the eyelid fits, just do these little hatch marks. So I'm going to do a couple little hatch marks here and a couple little hatch marks over here. And that's basically it. There's the eye. Now, he does have a, a little bit of darkness over the top. He's got an eyebrow. I can throw that in too with just little hatch marks. And if it's darker, just add a couple little dots or dashes to darken in that edge. And his bandana might as well do that while we're here. Just a, a little edge there, it's a little darker there, little dots towards the center of his, his nose where it touches his skin, less line. And then on the other side, a little bit thicker. And we want to do the same thing with the other eye. So you can start out with little hatch lines, that little triangle that's between his eye and his nose. And remember, the reason we do this is so you don't have hard lines. A shadow, especially a shadow on the face, is not a hard line. Little bracket for his iris, little bracket over there. This shine is a little bit bigger than the other shine. And just some dots and dashes, keep that shine in there. Little line over there, little triangle of darkness over here. Leave the center out. If we need to, he's got mascara on, so if we need to, we go back into it and put a little dot or dash here or there. But for the most part, just a couple little dots and dashes. There's his other eye. And again, we can come back to it if we need to. Here's the other part of his bandana, a little triangle of darkness right there. And that edge of the bandana is done. Maybe a little one over on the other side. A triangle of darkness there. And again, if you got rid of the graphite, that'll clean it up, make it nicer. And again, we can come back into it later. I can already see things I need to do, but I need that bridge to be a little bit thinner. A little darker here and there, just add more line if you want it darker. And then as his nose comes down, instead of drawing like nostrils and things like that, there's a little shadow under each nostril right there on the outside of the nostril. I'm just going to do a little curving triangle right there. Little dots and dashes. There's probably, what, four lines there is all and a dot. Same thing on the other one. Just a couple little dots and dashes. And then instead of doing a line around his nostril, I'm just going to do hatch marks through that shape.
and on the top part make it a little bit darker by some dots or dashes just to just to even it out and again if you need to you can go darker with this little dots and dashes so up the up his nose where it's a little a little shadow in here I'm just gonna go over this very lightly with some hatch marks just a couple of them there's what four little lines there and then over his nose where it's a little darker a couple little lines and dashes dots and dashes remember don't do too much one or two little lines a dot makes a huge difference and then his lip is the same thing you don't want to draw a line around it so just do little dots and dashes through the shape of the lip that you have and then on the bottom especially the corners of the mouth are a little darker just add a little bit dots and dashes darken those little corners in And for the most part, that's it. We could put a few little lines around his, his cheekbones, but right now, let's just kind of leave them out and see what happens. I'm going to define his face with some little line here. Then leave it out where it's really thin, and you could add those in down at the bottom. If it's not in the right place, you can adjust it. You can use his beard as part of that shadow and do those feathered lines just like we did with the the tiger or the wolf I guess is what we did little feathered lines they become the shadow under his chin part of his beard And then any shape of darkness that you see, like around his, his hair, where his hair kind of comes in, there's this kind of rounded shadow over there. I can just put that in with cross hatching. And his mustache, same thing. Just use those little feathered lines and just kind of curve them with the hair. And all of a sudden you'll say, oh, that's starting to look more like Jack. Darken those in where they need to go dark. Leave them a little lighter where they're lighter in the center. And they're just, and I'm barely touching the paper. Let the pen do the work. Don't press down with it. Little hair in the middle, same thing. Don't have them all going in the same direction. This takes practice. This is not easy. Well, it's easy once you learn it. It's like playing basketball. If he has any wrinkles, use dots and dashes. Like, he's got these couple little wrinkles on the side. I'm just going to put little dots and dashes um, in the center, under his eye. Just little dots and dashes. Don't do too much. Again, it's it's better to do less. 
I do need something over his cheek there. So I'm just going to throw in just a couple little lines where his cheek cheekbones are. Just a couple here and there. Less is more. And for a person to draw, you know, people, that's really it. The head is done. And yes, we can come back into it and add a little bit more if we want to. But for the most part, that's it. And that is very controlled. Uh, we cut, tried to control our line and everything. From here on out, there's things that you don't have to control. You just can be very spontaneous about it. I'm going to, uh, where's these little, these little braids on his beard become kind of important. Um, just do little dots where it's dark. So I'll do a little dot here, a little dot there, a little dot there, a little dot there. Just kind of keep doing that. And then on the other side, opposite, I'll do that. And a bead, that little bead that's in there, it's dark on the bottom, light on the top. So just draw the dark. Leave the bottom or the top out. It's just this little half circle. You just let it go. And a little hair going off the bottom. And if you think, well, it's really dark there, you need more darkness, just hatch through it. Just a couple little hatch lines. Anything that you think you need, you can add in there with just little hatch lines. And the, the closer your hatch lines are together, the darker the value. So you can go back into it, darken them up. You can cross hatch through it. Kind of up to you how you do it. The well, rest of it's going to be a piece of cake compared to that. I mean, that's that's un unnerving to try and get all that done. And I, I feel your pain because I've been there. So from here on out, you just kind of pick out any area that's dark, throw it in, and anything that's light, leave it out. You can always come back in later. So like his hair, you pick out any dark areas that you see, anything that's light, you just leave it out. A good way to do wrinkles, like his bandana has these little wrinkles off to the side. And a good way to do wrinkles is just little hatch lines, so triangles. I'm just going to go wide and then narrow, wide and then narrow. That's a great way to do wrinkles. I'll do that in his clothing, anywhere he's got a wrinkle. The little, the little, I don't know what they are, beads and bones and whatever it is that comes down off of his head there. I dare say pirates would probably not have those on. They kind of get in the way. But you do them the same way. They're darker on the bottom. You do the little bottom area and leave the rest of it out.
And it really doesn't matter what that thing is. As long as you got the shape right, it'll come through. Just little dots and dashes. There's the wrinkles. He's got a little bit of black hair that's really hard to see coming out off his bandana up there. That'll help define that top edge of the bandana. And what I thought was dark enough in his eye is not dark enough. So I'm going to go back in with some dots and dashes and darken those up a little bit. Don't be hard on yourselves either. Use that feathered line, especially on the edges of his hair, where it kind of comes out. Just a real soft feathered line. Curve it, don't go in the same direction. Flip some up, flip some down. So hair is one of those things that a lot of people really get concerned about. Just if you if you got dark hair like this, we could just do hatch lines, we can hatch through it. But it's your edges that are most important. So I can just go through this any which way I want to. And at the very end, I'm just gonna take a few little lines and come out away from it. And that tells everybody, oh, that's hair. When beginning, I didn't worry about what it was. It's, it's, nobody cares what it is it's just dark so you just hatch through it and then the edges just have a little little line coming out or a little a little something to tell people oh it's hair it's all about communication So just pick out the darkest areas and you can even have some just kind of hanging off to the side you could have hair coming out here just a couple little lines out there to tell everybody that's hair you don't have to connect them he's got a lot of stuff on his head that would drive me crazy I'm not drawing things, I'm just doing shapes of dark and light. And if it's a it's a braid, it's those little dots on either side, just to tell everybody it's you know, that's what it is. Where his shirt blends into his his chest don't even draw the shirt in maybe if you've got like right where his collarbone kind of comes out and his uh, his sternum is right there you might have a little bit of a shadow there and throw that in 
then down at the bottom, but that's a shirt. Everybody understands that's what it is. A couple little dots and dashes and you got it. And then you can be very spontaneous with this. Because we've got, we got the face done. And even if it doesn't look good, the more you draw on the rest of him, the more it takes away from the face. And it'll be fine. Things I find are really difficult to do are things like the buckle because there's so much that you have to leave out and there's stuff that you can just throw in there. So I'm just going to do the negative spaces and leave the rest of it out. I'm not drawing a line around it all. I'm just kind of trying to get the in-between stuff. It's not perfect, that's okay. nobody's going to say, oh, that buckle, you know, that buckle is off. I wonder sometimes if Pablo Picasso had that problem, that uh, he was in an art show or something, and somebody said, oh, that eye is in the wrong place. And he'd say... Oh, I meant to do that. I meant to put it there. And it got to the point where he actually did mean to put it there. He put those eyes in different places. I have no idea what I'm drawing here. I'm just doing all the dark shapes and whatever it is, hopefully it'll come through. Draw less than you think you need to. You always add more later on. You ready for hands yet? I'm not down to that point. I'm really not ready for them, but I do want to show you how to do hands because a lot of people fret about hands. 
And so I can kind of see where I've drawn them in. Um, hopefully they're about right, but just do the shadows. So here's a thumb. I'm gonna do the shadow above the thumb, a little shadow underneath the thumb, a little shadow over here. There's a little shadow that goes down. And you can see the thumb. I didn't draw the thumb. He's got a ring on his thumb, thumb ring. That would get in the way. So I'll put that little ring on there. Just a little, I have no idea what it is. These little, little dots and dashes of whatever. Now the upper part of his hand is kind of lost. I'm just going to let it get lost. Maybe a couple little dots and dashes. There's a little, little shadow under there. But there's his thumb, and that was that was easy. I didn't draw the thumb. Don't draw the thumb. If you think, well, I can see a thumbnail in there, you can draw the thumbnail. A couple little dots and dashes. There's the thumbnail. But just leave it out. Get rid of your graphite. You can always come back in later too and put in a little more dots and dashes if you want. But just do the dark areas. Same thing with this finger as it comes down. I can kind of see there's a dark area there. And then it comes down. I can see his fingertip right there. Little fingertip. And a little, little triangle of darkness in there. And up his hand, there might be a few little dots and dashes that go up there. You can see where his veins are. Don't draw the veins in. Just do a couple little dots and dashes. Here's his other finger. It's just this little shadow that kind of comes down. A little fingertip there. Maybe just a little dash. A little in between. there's his hand but this is something I learned I used to try and draw everything I used to try to draw every little detail until I uh, I looked at other artists and especially Boris Vallejo and I said you know what he's not drawing everything I don't need to draw everything little dots and dashes wherever you think you need them don't draw the hand just draw everything else around it and the hand will be there Remember, don't draw lines around things. Let it take care of itself and just do the textures using line and dot. Didn't even get to the guns. That's the fun part.
I suppose if you think about it, the, most of what you need to know is just value. And being able to attach those values by the amount of line that you use. You know, sometimes you just have to add more lines. So you shift around to a different angle. And add a few more lines. Whatever you need. But, but don't be afraid to leave things out either. Sometimes it's nice to have those things left out and let the viewer's imagination take over. Let them have that joy of figuring things out as well. So there's a ton of stuff in here. It's just just is what it is, but keep drawing until you're happy with it. You know, once once you've got enough information, you've drawn enough stuff. Wrinkles in sleeves or wherever are just little hatched lines in the direction and the shape that you see those little those little lines. If the sleeve is very light, just leave it out. And it's easy at the end, you can just kind of fade it out, just choose to put some things in, whatever you decide. And other things, you can just leave them out. Basically, that's it. Thanks for joining me on this little journey. Art makes life better. It does. Hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs>